Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland Hi folks! We're on our way to drop off Jack Spaniels at his grandparents because doggy paws and ball dumps with broken glass is not a good combo. So yeah, the next time you see us will be at the bottle dump. And look who's come digging today! On Valentine's Day! <laughs> Very romantic. See you there! Okay, we're at the tip and uh, we found our spots to dig with the probe and we're looking forward to it, so fingers crossed! Wish us luck! I just started digging out this old rotten tree stump so hopefully there'll be some good finds underneath it. My first find of the day and I think I know what this is. California fig syrup. Standard. I love finding these. Try not to break it this time. There's a lot of treasure to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland Through the fields and woodland With trusted spade in hand Bramble, rose and hawthorn Yeah, <laughs> you probably just saw that, I've had to take my jack off, I'm sweating Look at that, done ragged. It's got a bit of damage, but of course we repair these, so that's no problem whatsoever. Lovely cream pot. That's an absolute belter. And that's the first aerial belter dance. Just dig this out a bit of a fragment, but it looks like it has a really nice decoration on it. Which hopefully is not going to come off. That gorgeous little flower. That could definitely be salvaged. Probably a cup. Maybe there'll be some more bits. Just had this. Still got the label on or part of it anyway. But it's illegible unfortunately. It's one of these, um, I think it's like a pickle jar or something. I've had these before, I absolutely love them. They're really, really nice. Chamfer, sort of like concave chamfer, whatever you would call that. <laughs> um, it seems to be undamaged at the top. Pretty much. Perfect, yep. Oh, it says something. That's a registered number. Very nice indeed. A lovely good find. Had this as well, which is a bit of a heartbreaker. Hopefully the rest of it's there and we can repair it. And this as well, which is a heartbreaker. Uh, a bovril and a Dunragget, which you saw earlier. So yeah, just crack on. I've only found kind of machine made more modern stuff but hopefully there's older stuff underneath. Dig down round up. So this is a wee uh, tennis bottle, beer bottle, machine made but uh, an old machine made one, an early one. Um, a couple of uh, camp coffee and chicory, this one's from Glasgow. I thought I had Edinburgh side there, I did not. This one's from Edinburgh, drippy lippy machine made. Um, inks of the green one, the square one, this is a later one but it's one I've never seen before with a ground top. Lovely. Cattle of Bovril's, as you do. A little um, amber medicine. Um, heartbreaker 1, Heartbreaker 2. Lady's Leg Bottle. Horseshoe, hopefully for luck. Leave-in stopper. It's like 
Actually, I think this is actually a, a caper jar, not a pickle jar, a caper jar, but lovely to clean up really, really well. Uh, so I'm pleased with that. And then the belter so far, absolute belter. Cream pot needs a wee repair. Happy days. Just found this thing. Two ends that can take screws. And a little plate with two holes in. Not sure what it is. I think it might come from a lamp or something like that. But if you know, let us know. What an absolute belter. I've just found a blue poison, which is a good thing. And I will dance, but... <laughs> Someone's not happy. She wanted to find the blue poison today, her first. I'll probably give her this one. She's not looking. <laughs> you see it? I think I found a leg. Always makes me think of northern mudlarks or kitten caboodlers when we find something like this. Pretty cute. Just found this. Not easy to film because it's white. I thought it was a whole egg because I have found stacks of eggshells before, but it's not, it's actually a fake egg. It's a ceramic egg. And these are apparently quite rare, I think, from what I've read online about them. So um, I'm going to give that absolute belter status. <laughs> I think this is going to be another wine bottle. Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh. oh, that's got embossing on it. Wasn't even trying to get that out. Fields, ink and gum. That's a shame that's not whole because that's big. That'll be a nice one. Oh well. Hey! Maybe a beer, maybe a whiskey bottle actually. Yeah, it's a shame about that one, that would have been cool. Got this ball here, I can see that it's got embossing on it. It's different to anything I've seen on this tip before. Don't know if it's going to come out yet. Actually, maybe it's just a Rosie's. Yep, drippy lippy Rosie's. Still, it's a cool bottle. Let's get it out and cleaned up and have a look at it. Correction, it's not a Rosie's bottle. It's got thistles all over it. Roat and Co. Look at that, it's absolutely covered. And thistle emblems, which as you know, is the emblem of Dirty Secrets of Scotland. So that is an absolute belter. Love it. Absolutely loving this. Look at all those thistles. Absolutely covered in thistles. 
It's a dirty secret, it's the Scotland ball. I absolutely love that. I mean, come on. I know I'm not going to dance as much, right? But, dirty secret, it's the Scotland ball. Seriously? <laughs> That's always helpful. Okay, you get there. But Keep going. I'm finding stuff. It's cool. Good stuff. Good. <laughs> that's me just starting to find stuff now, really. A little wine bottle. I'm guessing that's a whiskey bottle, maybe. And there's I'm really gutted about field ink and gum broken. I don't think we've ever seen one that big before, so. Oh well. Hopefully that means there's more to find, though. I've just encountered this thing, which is, seems quite large and flat. I'm not sure what it is or if it's whole, but might be worth investigating. I think it might be the lid or something, which would explain why it's so big. Why do I feel like this is going to be a wasted effort? <laughs> so it started, so I've got to finish. Oh my god. <laughs> That's massive. That's actually quite cool. There's a couple of dings there. <laughs> that is so bizarre. My very first almost complete pot lid. in it. <laughs> well, we might repair that and find something to do with it. It's pretty cool. Check this out. <laughs> tiny, tiny little jug. Must be from a doll's house. That's gorgeous. Sarah's going to love that. I'm sure of it yet. Showing it to the public first, it's terrible. I'll go and show it to her now and see what she says. Found something you're gonna like. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's really cute. I can't believe that's whole. It's cute, isn't it? Do you want that for your little collection? Maybe. <laughs> okay, you can have it. Happy Valentine's. Thanks! <laughs> you spoil me. <laughs> Just found a little pipe bowl. So it's got some writing on it. So that's it. Black Dwarf. Was that preceding Red Dwarf on TV? Black Dwarf. Okay, I feel like we're going to have to look into that. It's not whole, it's a bit chipped and broken, but it's pretty cool. So I'll take that home. Lunchtime roundup, and what have we got? This absolutely belter bowl with the uh, thistles all over it, it's gorgeous. HP sauce, I think it's a really, really um, early machine made one though, but it looks at the top. 10 inch ball, a um, couple of coffee bottles, the inks, absolute belter poison, absolute belter little jug. Um, Sarah wanted me to put this in my roundup so she'll get that back at the end of the dig. Um, this is an absolute belter, a, a porcelain egg, amazing. I think they put these under hens to make them think that they laid an egg to make them lay more eggs. Anyway, um, this uh, caper jar, uh, a couple of heartbreakers, big ball there, plain jar, and this as well, an absolute belter, although it does need a repair. And at the back, actually, I think. So, 
still absolute belter. So, so far, so good. Um, it's only lunchtime, so that's a really encouraging start. Looking forward to having a sandwich and getting on my round two. Just doing some tip scratching in my lunch break, just to stretch out. I found this. Not sure what it would have been. Maybe sat on top of a candlestick? I don't know, I'll take it back to Willie and see what he thinks. I've just found this fallen tree in the storm damaged trees, so I thought I'd come and take a look at the roots, see if I can find anything. Oh, that would have been a little cup, a little coffee cup. Edinburgh. Oh, nice. That's quite a cool little emblem. Maybe I'll take that back. We've got a vulcanite stopper in the roots. See Adamson leaving. Well, we find a lot of those bottles, at least Willie does, so I'll take that back. Just had this tumble out. I'm just getting rid of the spoil from the cave in. I don't know if this is whole yet. Um, I had a quick look at it, but it doesn't mean it hasn't got any chunks out of it. So we, we call them ginger jars, Chinese ginger jars. That is absolutely gorgeous. Sarah's going to love that. She's going to be having a bit of a mudlark wandering around. I think she's a bit tired and I don't blame her because I am a bit as well. Anyway, um, that's a belter. That is an absolute belter. I love it. Ah, it's a stoter. Look at it. Stoter, by the way, is a Scottish word for, I guess, belter. Anyway, that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Stunning. Looks like it's intact as well. Sarah's gonna be buzzing when she sees that. And so am I. <laughs> Dug this out. I think it's a hock bottle. That was where it came from. See the base imprinted. Well, they're not that exciting because they're plain, but the colour is always beautiful. That deep teal. It's my favourite colour, so that's not too shabby. We like to put these where we can catch the light. Just had this. I've seen already is a cut nose powder. Did a feature on them a while ago. I think I've only found one now. This is the second. That's a good nick as well. Good order. Nice, lovely find. That's a belter that is. Look how crude the writing is as well. Very nice indeed. Just found this cute little bottle. Not sure if the top is burst like or broken. I'll look carefully. I think that might be like salad oil or castor oil bottle. Pale aqua. That's very cute. Definitely happy with that. Lovely. Just like this. Lovely bottle. That'll be plain. They always are with the lovely bottles. Kind of thing we put on the Etsy, so look out for them. Very nice indeed. I won't touch the top there too much because it's, uh, it's a burst lip. It'll be very sharp, but that's gorgeous. Glistening in the sunshine. Just started extending that way. Leaving this bit in the middle. Nice big root. I think I found something triangular. Like a warning sign. Definitely metal. Oh. Trademark. Huh. I think that's all it says. Orangey red. Trademark. Triangle. Hmm. Maybe there's something we can do with that. Oh, that's strange. I found bottles kind of similar to this before, but not one exactly like this. It's like I've seen them that they go down like that all the way, but this one's not like that. 
It's a very light aqua glass, I think, as well. Unusual bottle, maybe for sauce. For pouring honey, but probably more likely for sauce. Just found this. I think it's plain. It's hot. Lovely. A little lip around the top. Ooh, on the bottom. Feel something. Oh. Is that from Sheffield? A long way from Sheffield. Hmm. Maybe you can see that on the screen, but I'm going to have to take a closer look at that. But that's cool. Embossed on the bottom. Nothing inside. Nice. Just had this. And actually, I, when I pulled it out, I touched the top. I tur turned it a little bit and it started hissing. I'll squeeze the shot again, so I'll see if I can get it to hiss again. Anyway, it's an Adamson leave-in, and it's a bottle that I don't have. I've got one that's similar to this, but it's a larger size. So I'm really chuffed with this. This is a new bottle for me, a local one at that. That is an absolute belter. Let's see if we can get it to hiss again. Nah, it's done, it's done its bit. You can see the bubbles inside, look. That's so funny. Lovely, 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 lovely bottle. Love it. Is it a drippy lippy? Not entirely. Oh yeah, I think it is. It is. It's just a really, really well made one. I'm not sure if you can see that. There you can see it just comes down. Drippy lippy. Lovely, lovely, lovely bottle. Very happy with that. Hey, gorgeous, eh? That's the Market Cross in Leaven, which is still there, although they moved it out of the town centre into a park nearby. But that's, uh, that's an absolute belter. Let's have a very cautious water. <laughs> Just had a little aqua glass bottle out of there. I think it's got some writing on it, so actually, I think that says Kokodi on it. Someone's going to be happy. Sorry, I should be using the brush, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, Douglas, Kirkcaldy, Lady Bank and Dunfermline. Hey, I found a local. Ah, oh, it's a cute wee thing. Oh, crown top. Excellent. Oh, happy with that. Just found this. Lovely. Doesn't appear to be damaged at all. Lit from some sort of ornamental bowl or something. That's nice, that. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to keep it anyway. Just dug out a Liam Perrins. There it is. As I pulled it out, there was a thing flying through the air. And I think it had the stopper in as well, so I think that's my first glass bolt stopper that I found. There we go, complete with stopper. It's not too bad. Just had this yeah. absolute belter. Skill ball, drippy lippy, local, well Edinburgh, and I found a broken one of these before. I wasn't sure if I'd ever find a whole one. That is an absolute belter. And as far as I can see, it's not damaged. It was inside a broken plant pot, believe it or not. That is crazy. <laughs> um, Bailden's Pure Aerated Water, Princess Street, Edinburgh. So that's the street that's opposite the castle in Edinburgh. I'm buzzing, that is absolutely gorgeous. What an absolute stunner. An absolute belter even. Or an absolute stoter. Either one will do. Look at that lovely drippy lippy crown top. Gorgeous. I think that might be my favourite one so far of this type. I love this.
been allowed to jump in where Willie was digging because mine was not being very productive. I was getting quite tired. This is what I found, a little panel bottle, a little maybe chemist bottle, which is, I wonder if it was melted or if it was meant to sit that way, but it's very wonky. And this, I think, has some kind of embossing on it, which is nice. Sotol mouthwash tablets. Hmm. Mouthwash tablets, I don't think we've seen that before. That's cute. Just had this. It's embossed, I can't see what it says yet, but it looks cool. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I can't read that. Uh, AB Apot Ekari Alfred Carson's Enka Talbot. Uh, help me! Is that Swedish or something? Whatever it is, I can't read it. That's so cool though. Love that. Something a bit different. Another bizarre thing from this tip, eh? Lovely. Okay, so I scooped out some earth for Sarah, some ash, and we spotted something, and uh, Sarah's going to dig it out, so let's have a look. We have some movement. Ooh. Uh, ooh, big. Oh, big. Oh, it's also not whole. Oh, <laughs> we could repair it though. That's fixable. That is just That's massive. missing. Oh, it's Cooper. Cooper and Co. Oh yeah, we've had one of them, but a smaller one. Smaller version. one. Oh, that's upsetting. Still, oh. it's a nice find and we can repair it. From that side, it's lovely. It's perfect. Can you put your hand there? Just found this near the surface, but unfortunately it's a heartbreaker. So we're going to have to cut that down and make it into a nice pencil part or something. The print is beautiful, really clear. Something for you to do. More jobs for Willie. <laughs> <laughs> what have I found? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I think she's found some kind of printed jar. Just where Willie was digging and then we switched places. I wonder if he did it on purpose, just to seem like a nice guy. <laughs> what is that? Whoa, what's that? Is that a completer? I think it's a bit damaged, but it's a trademark fairy. Is this fairy liquid? Oh, when did that be. start? Could be, yeah. Trademark fairy. Is that a cup? It's got a pouring spout. Clark's patent pyramid night lights, nine hours. <laughs> I can feel a story coming on. Ah, I can feel a restoration job coming on. For me? Yeah. yeah oh, it's got um trademark on the back as well. I thought it was a flower pot. <laughs> it's like flower pot shape. Interesting. I've never seen that before. Oh, talking about flower pots. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do you like these though, eh? I love those little flower pots. Well, they've got a crack in it, but it feels like a Mars. Blub a dub a dub a dub. Nice reference. This flower pot like object was part of a Victorian food warming set patented by Samuel Clark from Middlesex, England in 1889. This piece called a pannikin would have contained the food to be heated, with the inner lip preventing spillages and stopping any grease floating on the surface from being poured out. Since 1857, Samuel Clark had been a manufacturer of nightlights, which could be burned safely while you slept, hence the nickname, the burglar's horror. His food warmer was designed to work with the existing lamp. Clark's original lamps featured a fairy embossed into the bottom, and they became so popular that all small candle-based lamps became known as fairy lamps or fairy lights, a term that we still use today for strings of small electric lights. Clark even had a rhyming couplet as part of his advertising campaign, often printed on his products. When nights are dark, think of Clark, who's hit the mark precisely. For his night lights, create light nights, in which you see quite nicely. Sarah's 
full-time roundup. So I started off by just getting quite a lot of modern things, got some plain sauce and beer bottles. Um, <laughs> found this whole lid, it's pretty heavy. Um, got a few dinks out of it, so we might take it home and do a repair job. We'll see how we feel. Um, I got a local Kirkcaldy bottle, but it's machine made. I've got a dark teal hock bottle. This was my first heartbreaker, really. Feels ink and gum, but a big one, so maybe a master ink. Bit broken. Um, another broken one, which is the leaving bottle, which we'll cut down. Me and Perrin's with the original stopper in it, which is quite nice. Some bits of pottery, which might be nice to salvage with the flowers and a little parrot there as well. I uh, got some, we think these are the ends of like window catches, but they've got a hole through the middle, so they might be quite good for making something out of. Bottle stopper, half egg cups. Again, I've got something vaguely in mind for these, so I might take them home to see what I can do with them. California figs are up, standard. Little bottles, standard. And then onto my better ones, apart from my mystery item here. A little clay marble, which is nice. I've never really found marbles before. So that's quite cool. My subtle mouthwash tablets, never seen that before. And the Heinz bottle. Two pipes. So we've got Prince Leopold, and then there's Black Dwarf, which I'm really interested to see what that means. A little paste polish pot from Sheffield. A little baby's leg. Really cute. And this is pretty cool. I think this is my favourite find. Um, I think from a little Google search, this is a food warming device. So it would have sat on top of something, maybe a little oil lamp, and the lid would have gone on top and it would have warmed food up. So maybe a little repair job there as well. That's Sarah's full time roundup. Oops, left out one thing, which is my triangular enamel sign saying trademark. I had it hidden under the lid. It's faded a bit from the bright red that it was before. But we'll take it home and see how it cleans up. Full time roundup and where to start. Okay, so you've seen all this stuff over here. This is a quick recap so you can see that's the first half on the green bag. The blue towel is the second half. This is a stunner. Look at those lovely thistles there. Daddy Seekers of Scotland, amazing. Cut nose powder, couple of little bottles. Absolute belter of a skittle bottle, Edinburgh and Princess Street written on it. Lovely. Drippy lippy as well. This is uh, this, what was it, K Brothers or, yeah, K Brothers Stockport. Just a plain aqua glass. This is the Anzora stuff, the hair stuff that I did a feature on a while ago. Couple of, that one's plain actually, I think. Um, and this is the Edinburgh um, Symingtons or Symingtons, the Pounds Pot. Um, yeah, another another Bovril. There's quite a lot of Bovril's here actually. Plant Pot, which is complete, so that'll come home. Plain ink, another plain ink. This, um, Sarah thinks this is Vaseline glass, so this will probably light up when that, under a ultraviolet torch. Um, this, which I think is maybe Scandinavian, I'm not sure. I'll need to look at that properly when I get home. This gorgeous little um, ginger jar, love that. That's a belter. Um, some more inks here, Stomers, we'll always find them. This is just a plain but lovely coloured um, panel bottle, so that'll end up on the Etsy store. A couple of little bottles for Sarah, but I'm not sure if she wants them. Um, this is this broken um, cream pot, which we'll probably take home and repair at some point. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of crazing, so it might be quite hard to paint. So, yeah, we'll probably take it back anyway. And, uh, and that's pretty much everything. So, what a belter. Oh, yeah, did I say this local beer bottle? I absolutely love that. Anyway, that is absolutely everything that we found today. And I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Got all this to bag up now. Thanks for joining us on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. We had a lovely time at the tip on Valentine's Day. Um, we found quite a lot of good stuff and uh, we enjoyed ourselves, so we hope you did too. Yep, I'll see you next time I'm here. All filled in. By Sarah, only. <laughs> well, these rainy 
Day Creations. Here is the Dunraggett cream pot. It's damaged here and here, and also little chips on the bottom, but that doesn't really bother me. The cream pots have got that, doesn't really matter because you don't see it anyway when it's displayed. So I'm just going to fix the top parts here and here today. The first thing that I need to do is just get the wire brush into here. It's not a very coarse one and just try and get out any dirt that I haven't got out when I cleaned it. It's probably good enough. Next thing I need to do is sort of rough up the surface with a needle file. This is a diamond bar needle file. All I'm doing is trying to create a key so it doesn't have to be perfect. And to be honest, it's quite scratchy and lumpy anyway, so probably be fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's so hard and it's already got little cracks and raised parts, so it'll, it'll grip it. So now I just need to do the sculpting with this, which is millipart, two part epoxy putty. This is the two different parts, and now you just squish them together. So now I plan to build up the broken parts with millipat and smooth it off with just water, which is what's in here, just normal tap water. So let's do it. Okay, I'm pleased with that. I'm just going to clean all this off now and then uh, that'll be done for this stage and I'll leave it to dry. That's it all cleaned off and ready to dry out completely. Um, so yeah, we'll just leave it now. And here it is. It's the next day. The millipot is dry and it's time to paint. I've already put the colours out that I'm going to use, these ones, and I'm going to just do a little mixture now to get it right to uh, to paint it. So here goes. Okay, here it is, first coat, and as you can see, the milliput is shining through here. So I want to do another coat just to check it, and I may have to adjust the colour of the paint, but we'll see. The paint here, I just covered it in cling film to keep it nice and wet. So let's keep going.
Okay, so I've got the colour almost there, but it's a little bit too yellow. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So what I've done here is I've just mixed up. This is the colour that we had before. I've come over here, I did a little bit of brown and I've mixed that in. And I did that off camera because it would just take too long to get it right. I think I'm pretty much there now, but we won't be able to tell until I paint it on and then let it dry and have a look at it. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's now snowing outside, so I'm having to switch to electric light. So the next images will be under work light. This is my good old Rustin ceramic glaze, which I've just put into a little plastic tub with a lid. Larger brush. And now I'm just going to put the, the glaze on. Okay, that's the first coat of glaze done. Quite happy with that. It hasn't dried yet, so it looks different to how it will when it's dried. The colours will change. Um, and it'll probably look, well, hopefully, look a little bit better than it does just now. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's the first coat. I'll repeat that. I'll do a few coats. But because it's repeating exactly the same process, I probably won't show all the coats. I'll just show the finished item. So there you are. One done ragged. Repaired. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland To become one of our absolutely incredible patrons please head over to patreon.com Our Etsy store is updated weekly so check it out for exciting new items every week And if you just want to buy us a coffee you can do so over on our Ko-fi account Thanks to everyone that's helping to support Dirty Secrets of Scotland Without your support these videos would not be possible to make